What is up guys? We're back with another BIOS video and today we're going to be checking out the BIOS here on the ASRock X870E Tai Chi motherboard. Now if you're wondering how do I get into this BIOS, like how do I get to this screen? When you boot up your system for the first time, go ahead and keep on hitting the delete key on your keyboard. Knock the backspace, just keep on hitting delete and you'll be dropped into the BIOS. At least on my version of the BIOS, I'm dropped into the advanced mode, but we're gonna go over easy mode first. Now I do wanna say that this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of ASRock's X870 and X870E motherboards. Obviously some settings will be a little bit different. And as you can see, since this is a Tai Chi motherboard, we have the Tai Chi logo here, but that might be a little bit different depending on which motherboard you have. Now to swap over to easy mode, you can just click up here or hit F6 on our keyboard. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we're brought into easy mode, which gives you a more visual representation of what's going on and allows you to change a few settings really easily. So here's our toggle switch up here. We can change our language. You can turn all of the RGB lighting on the board on or off just by clicking here. And then for our PPO, you can have it set to auto or enable just by clicking here. We have save and exit, and then we have load defaults right here. Over here, we get information on our CPU as well as our memory. So you can see what CPU we have installed, information on our memory. And if you want to load an XMP or Expo profile, you can just go ahead and click here. So by default, it will say auto, but if you click it, it will load the profile that's on the memory. So this memory kit only has XMP profiles. So it's gonna load the XMP profile. Down here, we have our storage configuration, and this is gonna show you every storage device that you have connected to the board, whether it's SATA or NVMe. As you can see, I do have an NVMe drive connected. Up here, we have a live graph of our CPU temperature. We also get a readout of our motherboard temperature and CPU voltage. This is, again, in real time. We have our time and our date here. Down under fan status, it's gonna show you all the fans and all the pumps that you do have connected and their actual speed. You can also set a thermal throttle limit. So by just clicking, you can set your TJ Maxx to your thermal throttle limit. Now, if you click on the left side of the mouse, it's gonna go down. If you click on the right side, or yeah, if you click on the right side of the mouse, it goes down. If you click on the left side of the mouse, it goes up. So and you can get back to auto by going all the way down or all the way up. So that is your thermal throttle limits. And then we have our boot priority over here. So this is all your active boot devices. If I had more than one, they would be listed here. And then you can use this right here and you could drag and drop them to set your boot priority. But that's everything in easy mode. I think it gives us everything that we kind of want, you know, within uh, an easy mode. XMP profiles, we can see our fans, we can see our storage in all of that so let's jump back into the advanced mode but again we just click here or hit f6 on the keyboard and our main screen again just gives us information here on you know what we have installed and everything like that i would have really liked to see a date on the version of the bios this is the latest version as this recording but i would like to see a date just so i know okay this you know this bios might be a little bit old so there's no date there but we can see the bios version under OC Tweaker, this has everything to do with tuning your system, overclocking your system, voltages, you know, different settings. So if we go into Performance Boost, it's set to Auto, but if we, we can set it to a Cinebench Profile 1 and 2, and then Performance Preset is also set to Auto, but there's a bunch of Performance Presets built in here that we can choose from if we wanted to. But again, we'll just leave that to Auto platform thermal throttle limits or the TJ Maxx. Again, we can change that. We can turn CPU overclocking on or GPU overclocking on. If we customize these, again, we can say our uh, CPU core voltages and our frequencies and everything like that. Same thing with GPU overclocking. We go to customize, we can set our graphics clock frequency if we were doing that. So you can go ahead and do that. DRAM frequency, again, we can change our DRAM frequency to whatever you may want. Again, if you enable an XMP profile, it will already be set to that. Memory context restore, and then DRAM profile configuration. This will show you your installed memories profile. So as you can see, we have one XMP profile on this, 
but it does give you again just information and then DRAM timing this is all your timing so if you wanted to loosen or tighten your timings this is where you're going to go ahead and do that and then we have all of our voltages here infinity fabric frequency again tons of voltages and then external voltage settings would be like your load line calibrations and everything like that so it's all in this oc tweaker menu and then you can save and load this stuff as well so if you did have like an overclocking profile you want to save or load you can go ahead and do that so that's pretty much everything in the oc tweaker it gives you kind of all what you would want for tuning your system under advanced under cpu configuration we have some information, of course, on our CPU and the different settings that you can enable or disable like SMT and, and things like that. PCI configuration, a few different settings. One of the big ones is resizable bar. This is enabled by default, so you really won't have to change this. Onboard devices configuration. So again, this is everything that's sort of on the board. So like, again, you can enable or disable RGB lighting. Uh, the HD audio, onboard LAN, the WAN, Bluetooth, um, you know, stuff for the Gen 5 ReDriver. It's all here. So everything else that's on the board is essentially right here as a main setting. Storage configuration. Again, this is all your storage devices. And if we had them connected, we could go into their settings. Under NVMe, it's just going to show us the drives that we do have installed. And again, we have a drive installed. So we have information on that. ACPI configuration. USB configuration, trusted computing information. So if you did have a TPM device, there's information on that. AMD CBS, and these are all your different options within this. Not gonna go into these, you know, a lot, but one of the big things in the AMD CBS under common options that you might have issues with is like C states. So global C states can change up if you wanted to. But again, we have a ton of different settings in all of these. Again, I'm not gonna go over all of these, but these are all the AMD CBS settings and then AMD PBS settings. This is where you will find your firmware version. So whatever AG, AGESA version that you're running, this is where you're gonna find it. I really wish it was on the main screen on the bio so we don't have to jump into menus to find it, but this is where it's at. Graphics features, and then AMD common uh, platform module settings here as well. So your link speeds and some other stuff in here. And then AMD overclocking, of course, we have to accept. And when we accept, we can like go into manual overclocking and change different things. Uh, Infinity fabric and DVR timings. Again, you can change all of this stuff if you want to, but this is everything to do with AMD overclocking. If you are a serious overclocker, we, of course we have LN2 mode that you can enable or disable. So everything to do with hardcore overclocking is in this specific menu. And then we just have some like default uh, bio settings like text colors and full HD bios and everything like that. Oh, here's the setup style. So when you first load into the bios, we went into advanced mode as I showed you, but if we switch this, we could jump into easy mode when we get into the BIOS the next time. So that's where that setting is. I did not know that. If we go over to tool, so we have uh, a ASR USB LED test. We have LED firmware recovery. So if you're having issues with your RGB lighting, you can recover everything. We have an SSD secure erase tool. So if you're removing an SSD, you want to secure erase it. This gives you that ability, especially if you're like selling it to somebody or giving it to a friend. And then we have media sanitation tool, and then we have instant flash as well. Allows you to easily go ahead and flash your BIOS. That's actually how I updated the BIOS to the latest version. Real easy to go ahead and do. And then we have the auto driver installer. So when you install Windows for the first time, you'll be prompted to install the auto driver installer. I really recommend this because it makes it super easy to install all your drivers at once for some but if you don't want to do that, you can easily go ahead and disable that if you want to. So those are your tools. Under hardware monitor, this is going to give us a live readout of our temperatures, um, our fan speeds, and our pump speeds, and our voltages, and then different settings for each. So you can see all of our different settings, like CPU fan one, silent mode, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, our different modes that we have. So you can set each header as essentially on the board you can also run fan tuning and fantastic fan tuning um, on each uh, fan header as well so you can really tune everything i would 
definitely recommend this if you are in a case and you want to specifically tune your fans depending on their location it's good to run those um, if you want to do that but that's everything in your hardware monitor under security you can set a supervisor password a user password and set up secure boot under boots you have your boot options so again you can see a list of all your boot options and then some different things about boot again like fast boot full screen logo things like that and they didn't forget um your boot uh, your boot override is just in the exit down here. So I always like to see boot override allows you to easily install Windows from a flash drive. And then when it does its reset, it's not going to try to boot to that flash drive a second time. So boot overrides here. And then we have save changes and exit, discard changes, all that kind of stuff right in here. So this is a pretty simple BIOS. I would say everything is really easy to find. Again, just on this main screen, I would have really have liked to have seen like the AG ESA, uh, like, you know, what version that we're running and things like that and the date of the BIOS, just because like, oh, I don't know what date version 3.10 came out to. It'd be nice to know. So it's like six months later, I'm like, oh yeah, I should probably update my BIOS. Um, and then the easy mode, I would say everything's there. I would have liked to see shortcuts to the fantastic tuning and fan tuning within the fan status, but it is pretty much the same as a lot of the previous ASRock BIOSes that I've taken a look at. Not much really has changed here. It's snappy, it works, and you should be able to find all of your settings. So if you do have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video and got anything out of it, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.